Let's take a look at landscapes. All land masses on Earth can be classified as one of three types of landscape, including mountains, plateaus, and plains. In this video, we'll take a look at the characteristics of each of these types of landscapes. Let's begin with mountains. Mountains tend to have a high elevation, meaning the land mass extends high above sea level and generally high above the surrounding land areas. Additionally, mountains have lots of relief and big changes in elevation between the peaks and the valleys. Finally, and most importantly, mountains have deformed bedrock, meaning the layers of rock beneath the surface have been folded, faulted, or tilted by the movement of Earth's crust. This can be seen in this diagram as the layers of rock are no longer horizontal. Here's an example of what a mountain landscape may look like. Notice the high elevation and lots of relief, steep and jagged valleys and peaks. If we could see beneath the surface, we can infer that there is deformed bedrock down there as well. Let's take a look at the second type of landscape, a plateau. Like a mountain, a plateau tends to have high elevation. It, different, though, in that it has very little relief. It tends to be fairly flat. Most importantly, plateaus do not have deformed bedrock. Rather, they have horizontal or flat bedrock layers. And you can see that in this diagram. Here's an example of a plateau landscape. Notice how it has a high elevation and it's fairly flat on top, and the layers of bedrock, which in this case are exposed, you can see that they are horizontal, nice and flat. Finally, we have a third type of landscape called a plain. A plain is low in elevation, has very little relief, and, like a plateau, has flat horizontal bedrock layers, which can be seen in the diagram. Here's an example of a plain landscape. Notice very little relief, low elevation, and we can infer that the bedrock beneath is flat and horizontal. So those are our three types of landscapes, mountains, plateaus, and plains. But each of these landscapes can have a different appearance, and that's because they're largely shaped by the local climate. Let's take a look at a humid climate. A humid landscape results in precipitation, which feeds streams and rivers, and those weather and erode material off the surface, resulting in rounded land areas. As such, we have well-developed soils, which result from the significant vegetation that's able to grow in these regions. So here's an example of a humid landscape. And I can tell because the hills and the mountains are rounded and smoothed, and there's lush green vegetation. But what if we were to look at an arid climate? Well, these look very different. The rocks tend to be affected by abrasion caused by wind rather than water, and this leaves us with steep and jagged cliffs. We tend to have small amounts of sandy, dry soil and very minimal vegetation. As a result, an arid landscape may look like this. Notice steep, jagged, worn down cliffs, very little vegetation and soil. Interestingly, New York State has all three types of landscapes, mountains, plains, and plateaus, and they are all affected by our local climate. You can see these landscapes in your Earth Science Reference Tables on page 2. Here's the map in the reference tables, and you'll notice that we have mountain regions, like the Adirondack Mountains, plateau regions, like the Allegheny Plateau, and even plains, like Long Island or the Atlantic Coastal Plain. Oftentimes, you will use this landscape map in conjunction with the bedrock map of New York State. Using these two maps together, you can tell the type and age of rock in the various landscape regions found within the state. Now, another thing to think of when we're looking at the shape of the land is that it can have an effect on how streams and rivers flow over the surface. These patterns that we see of streams are known as drainage patterns. And we have a few that we should know of. One is called a dendritic drainage pattern. And this occurs when streams and rivers flow down the side of a slope, often found in mountainous areas. The streams will flow downhill, pulled by gravity, and come together from small tributaries into a larger river. Here's an example of a dendritic drainage pattern as seen from space. <laughs> 
We also have other patterns, for example, a radial drainage pattern in which we have a dome. For example, an island. The rivers will flow from the peak out towards the edges. And so from above, you'll see a pattern that looks like this. Here's an example of a radial drainage pattern from nature. Notice the rivers flowing from the center down the slopes towards the sea. When we have some more unique landscapes, like this faulted and deformed bedrock, which of course would be classified as a mountain, we might see something like this rectangular drainage pattern, in which we have parallel streams and rivers with smaller tributaries feeding them. Here's what this might look like from space. Finally, we have another unique pattern called an annular drainage pattern. And this often forms when we have a mountain or a volcano where the top has been worn away, exposing layers of deformed bedrock. The result will be streams and rivers will flow around the peak, gradually making their way downhill. Here's an annular drainage pattern from nature. Now for a quick recap. We talked about the three different types of landscapes including mountains, which are tall with lots of relief, resulting from deformed bedrock. Plateaus, which are also tall but have less relief and nice flat horizontal bedrock. And finally, plains, which are lower and flatter with horizontal bedrock. We discussed how local climate can affect landscape. Humid landscapes will be rounded and lush with lots of vegetation and plant life, while arid landscapes will be angular and jagged with less soil and vegetation. Remember, you can find the New York State landscapes and bedrock characteristics in your Earth Science reference tables. And keep in mind that New York displays all three types of landscapes. Finally, we looked at stream drainage patterns. Just remember that the shape of a landscape determines what the drainage pattern will look like, and it's your job to simply match up the shape of the landscape with the pattern of streams that we would see.